Good morning, love life, family, friends, and partners around the world. Thank you for joining us in our Sunday morning virtual worship service. Psalm 7 and 17 says, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. Love life, let's give God praise as we thank him for the many blessings he has granted us. Our 2021 church motto is forward in faith. And the word declares in 1 Corinthians 2 and 5 that your life of faith is in response to God's power. The more we see his power, the more our faith increases to operate in him as our only source of power. Stay connected. Get ready, get ready, get ready. We will begin 2022 with our first in-person worship service since the pandemic. We are so excited to announce we will be back in the sanctuary on Sunday, January 2nd, 2022 at 10 a.m. For everyone's safety, there will be a few requirements. Limited seating, proof of COVID vaccination and masks will be required, and stay tuned for more detailed information. Again, get ready to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise at Love Life. Our scripture, food for thought this week, is Colossians 3 and 17. Whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God the Father through him. The good news. Demonstrate your thankfulness to the Lord in every part of your life, in every way that you can. God gave you your great life, so find ways to give back, even if it's in the smallest of gestures throughout the day. Sunday School is a place where we can grow in our knowledge and understanding of who God is and who we are in Him. So please, Join us every Sunday morning for Zoom Sunday School at 9 a.m. You can join via Zoom on your computer or phone. The meeting ID is 994-0311-7979 and the password is 278-315. The link will be posted on our Facebook pages. The Sunday School lesson will be available on YouTube and Facebook pages. Someone said, It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. So are you ready to take a biblical journey? Join us on December 1st, 2021 at 7 p.m. as we continue our travel through the book of Philippians. You can put it in your tablet or iPad, post it on your Outlook or Gmail calendar. Whatever you do, make sure to come along this fantastic voyage. Good morning, women of love life. Please join us for coffee and conversation on Saturday, December 11, 2021, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Whether you like coffee or tea, you are invited to a light check-in conversation as we wrap up 2021 and look forward to the coming year. The Zoom information will be sent the week of the meeting. And love life. Let's pray healing for those affected and infected by HIV AIDS. Matthew 4 and 23 reads, And Jesus went above all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. In times like these, we all need prayer. Psalm 34 and 17 the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Taking time to pray for others brings healing upon your own life. So please remember to call in at 7.14 p.m. on Fridays for seven minutes of prayer and Wednesday morning corporate prayer at 7.14 a.m. and have faith 
that he will listen and answer your petitions. You can connect by dialing 712-832-8305 with an access code of 481-3100-POUND. Our sick and shut-in would love to hear from you. Please send a card or make a phone call if you can't be physically present with them. It can be a tremendous comfort to know someone is praying for their fast recovery. Please remember to pray for Sister Ruth Diane Fielder, Elder Barbara Thomas, Mother Ann Harrell, Joseph Lewis, Elder Michael Durham, George Prothro, and Brian Marquise Hutchins. Mark your calendars this week as we end one month and begin anew, celebrating with Loretta Ray and Mother Margaret Smith. On the count of three, let's wish them a happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Please stay connected with us. For membership or prayer requests, please email us at info at lovelifecfc.org or call 404-241-1499 and we will get back with you immediately. And please visit our website for all announcements and giving opportunities at www.lovelifecfc.org. Thank you for joining us. Please come again and have a wonderful week. Welcome and thank you for joining us at Love Life Christian Fellowship Church with the ministry gifts of Dr. Grace C. Washington, where we preach, provide, and prepare God's people to love life. Continue to listen until the end of this broadcast for information about our weekly services and how to connect with us to become a member. This day has been given to me fresh and clear. I can either use it or throw it away. I promise myself that I shall use this day to its fullest realizing it can never come back again. For I'm the only person who has the power to decide who I will be. I make myself who I am. And with that being said, I'm going to decide today to keep being thankful to God. I'm going to decide today to keep running for Christ. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Love life, family, friends, partners all over the world. We welcome you today to Love Life Christian Fellowship, where you'll love life at love life. And where you'll find love, you'll find God because God is love. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Gracie Washington, our first man, Deacon Robert Washington, and the Love Life family, we are so elated that you have joined us today. Whether you're watching from your home office, your kitchen, or your living room, we want you to have an open mind and an open heart ready to receive. And since this is a season of thanksgiving, continue to have a heart of gratitude. For I am told that a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. Are you ready for your breakthrough? Do you want your miracle? Are you in need of a healing? Just say thank you. For a grateful heart is truly a magnet for miracles. Well, brace yourselves. Because it's that time that we go forward in Christ. Get ready, get ready, get ready for yet another epic Sunday. Let's go. Good morning, Love Life. Thank you for joining us today. We welcome you. Now let's please bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we welcome you in our church today as we honor you, Lord. We ask for you to allow our minds to collect and understand your wisdom here today, Lord. 
allow our spirit to receive you and your guidance. And may our hearts feel your compassion here this morning, Lord. Continue to not let these circumstances loosen our connection with you, Lord. And bless this church, bless the pastor, and bless the people here today. And I say this in Jesus Christ's glorious name. Amen. I am reading from the Living Bible, Colossians 1, verse 11 to 14. We are praying, too, that you will be filled with his mighty, glorious strength, that so that you can keep going no matter what happens, always full of the joy of the Lord, and always thankful to the Father who has made us fit to share all the wonderful things that belong to those who live in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us out of the darkness and gloom of Satan's kingdom, and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son, who brought our freedom with his blood and forgave us all our sins. Thank you. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that your promises are sure. You are faithful and we can rely on you. I pray that we will find joy in offering our time, talents, and money to meet the needs of others in our church and our community. Bless our seed, Lord, rain on it as you see fit. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us give. Good morning. 
what a blessing it is to be amongst the land of the living one more day. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Now, before we begin, I count it an honor and a privilege to be able to bring the bread of life this morning. I'd like to thank our wonderful pastor, Dr. Gracie Washington, and our first man, Deacon Robert Washington, for giving me the opportunity to be able to bring this word before all of God's people here today. To the first family of Love Life, and to the clergy, deacons, Titus women, family, friends, and visitors everywhere in cyberspace, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. In the book of Proverbs, in chapter 18, verse 22, the word of God says, the man who finds a wife finds a treasure and he receives favor from the Lord. Saints, I come before you today declaring that I am truly a rich man. God has allowed me to find favor in him because he has allowed me to find my treasure here on earth in the form of my beautiful wife, Adriana Christina Gray. She is the light that brightens my darkest days. And I thank God for her. I love you, baby. Thank you for being there for me. Amen. Now, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to bring the word before your people. God, we thank you for this wonderful day, for this is a day that you have made, and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. God, I ask that you would go before me today, God. Allow my flesh to decrease, Lord God. Don't let any form of Robert Gray be up here, but your Holy Spirit speaking through your broken vessel today. God, I ask that you would lead me by your spirit and have your way throughout this message. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, this morning, you have already heard the scripture uh, that was read. I'd like to read it again because I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version which brings a little more emphasis to what the word reads and how the word reads. In verse 11 of chapter one in Colossians, the word of God says, we pray that you may be strengthened and invigorated with all power according to his glorious might to attain every kind of endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints. God's people in the light. For he has rescued us, hallelujah, and has drawn us to himself from the dominion of darkness and has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption because of his sacrifice resulting in the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of sins penalty. Glory to God, hallelujah. I'm a co I am a commercial contractor by, by, by trade. Um, I'm a commercial glass and glazing contractor. And when we're building something important, something that you want to last, it absolutely is necessary to start with a blueprint. We don't begin important projects haphazardly. We begin with a plan for what we desire in the final product. If we don't, we will end up with the attitude that Moses' brother Aaron had when he testified to Moses that he simply threw the gold into the fire and out came this calf. That could be found in Exodus 32, verse 24. The author Stephen Covey, Covey expressed in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, the importance of planning this way. Begin with the end in mind. Another way to picture the importance of planning is called the Lego principle. There are two ways to build with Legos, and I'm talking about Legos, the toy. One way is to put the pieces together in any fashion that comes to mind. The other way is to follow the specific directions for what it is that you're trying to build. And so, one could conclude that if you wanted to build a battleship or an airplane, you had best follow the, the instructions or the directions. If not, your boat won't float and your plane won't fly. Hallelujah. But as believers in Christ, watch this. There's nothing 
that we can do for God haphazardly. We, we, we are not people that live by or believe in luck or happenstance. Well, at least we shouldn't be. Amen. Understand this. Christians are people whose lives are not planned by coincidence, but instead are planned and designed by divine intention, which is called the will of God. Hallelujah. God desires that we live and continue his work in his power and in his victory. The songwriter said it this way. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb. Uh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. But watch this. There can be no power or victory unless you ask yourself this question. What does God want for my life? Huh. You see, if you are thinking about who you are and what you can do and what you can receive from God without considering what he wants for your life, then we are missing an important point. God wants the best for us, but the reason he wants the best is so that he might be glorified in our lives. Sometimes we get a little off track thinking about my authority. Watch this. My promises, my healing, my blessing, my ministry. When our focus should be on does what my, my, hallelujah, match up with his will. Let me say that again. Does my, my, my will match up with his will. Amen. Now, having said that, we know that God wants us to have good things. He wants us to have all of his promises and all of the benefits of a life lived in him and for him. And the reason he wants that for us is because in our receiving his character, his power, his mercy, his love, his justice, his eternal nature inevitably will be revealed through us. A little tongue tied this morning. <laughs> In other words, the more him, hallelujah, that is reflected in us, the more power and victories we will have through Christ that strengthens us. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. That was a good place to throw up those little worship hands in the chat screen and just type those little hearts. Hallelujah. Now, here we are getting into our lesson today as we focus on these four passages of scripture in Colossians. We see here, starting in verse 11, that Paul desires for the people of Colos or Calosse to be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience. Now, I want you to underline three words in verse 11. Strengthen, power, and might. You see, the first two words, strengthened and power, come from the same word in the Greek, which is dunamis. I'm, I'm sure you all have heard that word several times from our pastor, where she speaks and she preaches and she even teaches in dunamis, which means power miraculous power or the miracle in of itself. God wants us to have this kind of strength for a reason, so that we may have great endurance and patience, as his word says. Now, let's look at the last word, might. This is the Greek word, kratos, and it means vigor or physical power. 
the translation from the Greek in the first part of verse 11 could easily have read, being strengthened with all power according to might, vigor, that is manifested in his glory. So if we are going to be strengthened, where is it going to come from? With all power, according to his glorious might. That's where. Beloved, the only way all power can take place is when we understand that power point number one, his power brings us into agreement. I'll say that again. His power brings us into agreement. What do you mean, preacher? I'm glad you asked. In Luke chapter four, this was the time when Jesus was uh, uh, finishing up his final preparations so that he can do his earthly ministry here. And as the son of God, he had authority. Uh huh. He had power. When the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove, that's when he received power. But he needed that intimacy with God. Hallelujah in order to be sure that he would always do the Father's will in the Father's power. It was only when his spirit was in agreement, glory to God, with the Father that he could begin his work and operate in his Father's power. You see, in Luke 4 and 14, it reads, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. So, so before I begin, let me put this, declaim, this disclaimer right here, right now. I'm not picking on anybody. Because the first person that I often ask these questions to is myself. So, I have four questions here that I want to ask. Now, don't get into your feelings. Just listen to what it is that I'm asking. And then answer in your own discretion. Question number one. So if we have the same power in Jesus that Jesus said we had, why can't we do the works that we are supposed to do or supposed to be doing according to what Jesus said we would do? Hmm. Question number two. Have we received the Lord Jesus into our hearts? I, I, I know we saved and we sanctified and we filled with the Holy Ghost, but let me ask that again. Have we received the Lord Jesus into our hearts? I mean, really, more than just saying some words, but actually letting him have control over our lives, full control, because that is only when we will receive his authority. Uh-huh. Question number three. Have we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Because that is the power source, hallelujah, that he has provided for us. And lastly, question number four. Have we taken time to get intimately acquainted with the Father, to know his will for our lives? You see, he wants us to do that for when our will is in agreement with his will. We can go into action without any doubts or fears. Somebody type in the chat. His power brings us into agreement. Hallelujah. Now, we just got finished singing the song. There is power in the blood of the lamb and victory is mine, right? But have you ever asked yourself this question? What does his power do? I mean, preacher, what does God's power do? Oh, I'm glad you asked. That's leading us into PowerPoint number two. His power makes us heaven ready. Type in the chat. His power makes us heaven ready. In verse 12, Paul said, the Father has qualified us 
to take part in the inheritance of the saints in the light. This is what the King James Version means when it says the Father has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Now, the New Living Bible uh, transfers it this way, says it this way. The Father has made us fit to share all the wonderful works that belong to those who live in the kingdom of light. You see, through the cross of Jesus the Christ, all believers are made fit and ready to go to heaven. Oh, that was a good time to shout right there. Hit your little, hit your little, uh, your, your little heart bars. Hit it, hit it. Saints, there is nothing else we need to do to be qualified for heaven. It says all believers are qualified to be a part of God's royal priesthood. All believers. All believers are qualified to be a part of God's eternal kingdom. All believers. Now, there are a lot of things, glory to God, that I am not qualified to do. Uh huh. Such as brain surgery, dentistry. I don't think you want me pulling out your feelings and, and, and all of that. Flying an airplane or, or even fixing your car. And certainly, I'm not qualified to play quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Although, I probably could take Matt Ryan's job and play for the Falcons. That was for my Falcons fans. Come on now, y'all don't hold that against me. And if you're being honest, there are a lot of things that you are not qualified to do as well. But, hallelujah, but, I'll say that again, but if you have been washed by the blood of Jesus, hi, yeah, 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 then you are certainly qualified to go to heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's another good place to shout. Throw those praise signs up. Hallelujah. The apostle Paul said it this way in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Then in verse 21, Paul says, for he made him. He knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the right righteousness of God in him. In other words, God the Father made God the Son, Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody says his power makes us heaven ready. You see, Jesus never sinned, but he took all of our sins on himself when he died on the cross so that we could have his righteousness when we have him as our Lord and Savior. There's an old reverend by the name of Dr. Bill Booknight from Greenville, South Carolina, who explained the amazing exchange this way. Now, in his words, he said, a sinless Christ took upon himself the sin of all people. He bore it to Calvary. He suffered and died for it. And in exchange, covered all believers in his perfect righteousness. Then he said, let's suppose that I'm wearing a coat that reveals the state of my soul. Every commandment I ever broke every needy person I ever ignored, every lustful thought I ever had, every profanity I ever uttered, all have left dirty marks and stains on my coat. What a filthy garment it is. I must wear the coat and no cleaner on earth can remove its dirt, stains, and smudges. Now, let's suppose that Jesus approaches us we try to hide because we don't want him to see our filthy coat. It reveals everything bad about us. But Jesus finds us even when we're hiding. And he says, now put your name in this blank. Robert, huh, I know all about your coat. 
Oh, glory to God. But, hallelujah, I love you anyway. Give me the coat. Now, miserable with shame, I turn the coat over to him. And then I watch as he marches off to Calvary. Oh, glory to God. He wears it on the cross, bearing the penalty for every smudge and stain. Uh, at that very moment, when he cries out from the cross, it is finished and breathes his last. Suddenly, uh, I become aware that I am now wearing a new coat. Hallelujah. Instantly, I recognize it. It's Jesus's coat, not a smudge or a stain on it. It's a coat of perfect righteousness. Thank you, God. Now, I can walk into the very presence of God, clothed in the righteousness of Jesus. What a trade, what a trade. Let's say it again. His power, the blood, makes us heaven ready. Hallelujah. Victory point number three. We're going from power points to now victory points. His victory rescued you. Let me say that again. His victory rescued you. You. Verse 13 says, for he has rescued us and has drawn us to himself from the dominion of darkness and has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Somebody say we have been delivered. So often we forget from what and where it was when Christ delivered us. We forget. I say that because if you were raised in a Baptist church, it is likely that you made a confession of faith at a young age. You may find yourself doubting that you have a real testimony to tell because you do not see or remember much change in your life at such a young age. But now on the other hand, the drunk or the drug addict or the prostitute who, 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 who may have been saved or, or, or may have had a different encounter you know, the stories of darkness and debauchery may fill their witness account, their testimony. If you've never lived that side of this dark world, don't think your story is any less effective. Come on, somebody. That just means your story or your testimony is that of God's providential hand protecting you. Oh, that's a good place to say amen. Hallelujah. Satan knows. You are not his and he wants to keep you quiet and he will whisper in your ear that your story of your coming to Christ is boring and useless. But you must never doubt the effectiveness of the Holy Spirit working through your testimony. Pastor says it this way. We all have our own captive pawns. Amen. And your story may be the only story that somebody will ever get to hear regarding Jesus and his presence in your life. Now, delivered from the authority of darkness is what it says, right? Regardless of your walk before you believed, I might lose a couple of you now. You were under the authority of darkness. That's right. This is what verse 13 is telling us. The literal reading of rescue is to draw oneself or to draw to oneself. And that is what God does. The father draws us to himself out of the darkness, out of Satan's kingdom and into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. When you are in the light, Satan has no authority over you. Hallelujah. His grip is gone because darkness hates the light. The word says light and darkness can inhabit the same place at the same time, right? So watch this. You can live victoriously, hallelujah, because Christ has delivered you from the dominion of sin. What you need to do now is to act as a person who has been delivered, hallelujah. Stop walking around defeated, woe is me, as though you have no power and you have no victory, hallelujah. We have now been rescued out of darkness. And so now God requires us to live in victory and not defeat. 
Type in the chat box. Type in the chat box. His victory rescued you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You see, Paul wrote a letter to the church in Rome stating that same thing. He wrote, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lusts and do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness. But present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead. That's Romans 6 and 13. The kingdom, the kingdom you have been transferred to is Christ's kingdom where he reigns. Hallelujah. Believers are citizens. Christians live there. We have been transferred and we are now royal subjects. And that is cause for us to live victoriously. Because when you belong to Christ, now you have to strive. Now you strive to walk worthy of your calling in Christ Jesus. <laughs> You've heard by now that his, his power brings us into agreement. And that his power makes us heaven ready. And, 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 and you've heard me say that his victory rescued you. And now victory point number four. Lastly, his victory paid for and released you. He did a double indemnity when he went to the cross. Hallelujah. His victory paid for and released you. Before we became subjects of Christ, we needed redemption. That is where we find uh, 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 in verse 14, you see, redemption, redemption in whom we have redemption because of his sacrifice resulting in the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of sins penalty. This is where we find redemption, which is a slave term. Uh huh. When a slave was purchased, they were redeemed by the master. And the heart of the ransom idea is the concept of exchange. Christ exchanged places with you when he redeemed you. Redemption is also a word that expresses a great aspect that Christ has done on our behalf. Along which words such as sacrifice, offering, appropriation, Ransom, justification, adoption, and reconciliation. It attempts to describe the riches of our salvation. It means to deliver by payment of a ransom and was used to speak of freeing slaves from bondage. Now, because he re he's redeemed us, you can now live victoriously because Christ has rescued you. He's paid for you, and he releases you. Hallelujah. Redemption results in the forgiveness of the sins, but the, that, that, that forgiveness is what releases you. Uh huh. When you forgive somebody, you release somebody. They no longer have power over you. They no longer control you. They no longer can manipulate you. Why? Because you've forgiven them and you've released them. Glory to God. Being released is the idea behind the word forgiveness in verse 14. There, Paul explained to Christians that in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. The word forgiveness is talking about a pardon for our sins, being released from prison, being let go from our sins as, 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 if, we, as if, if, if they had never been committed. Hallelujah. And we get this pardon only because Jesus took the full punishment for our sins when he died on the cross for us. Christians. All of our sins are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And in Psalm 32 and 1, King David said it this way. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Christ releases you to live a, a life of freedom from the darkness because Christ redeemed us. God has sent away our sins to never be found again. 
How do you know that, preacher? How do you know God's our sins won't be found again? Because in Psalm 103 and 12, it tells us as far as the east is from the west. Oh, glory to God. So far has he has he removed our transgressions from us. I'd like to conclude this message the way that I started this message this morning with a song, except this time I won't sing. But instead, I'll, I'll, I'd like to read a few verses. And this song is by the, the, the group uh, 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 Shekinah Glory Ministries, and it's entitled Jesus. I'm sure some of us have heard this song. I'm sure some of us know this song word for word. And I just thought it would be befitting for the closing today. And so I'm going to read, and it says, I'm so glad yeah. you died for me. Ah, yeah. I'm so glad hey, you shed your blood for me. Ah. I'm so glad, glory to God, that you rose for me. Who am I talking about, y'all? Sweet Jesus. Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Hey, yeah, yeah. Jesus. It goes on to say how he loved me in spite of me. Jesus. What you did for me on Calvary. Jesus. To be hung there and die for me. Jesus. It says Buddha couldn't do it. Hallelujah. Confucius couldn't do it. Hallelujah. It says God is God all by himself. Jesus. When I think of his goodness, hey, yeah, 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 and all he's done for me, I can't help but to give him glory. He is God all by himself. Come on and give him some glory. It says that at the name of Jesus, demons must flee. That's the kind of power he has given unto me, Jesus. We speak to that sickness and it will leave Jesus. That's the word he said in his word, Jesus. He, he said, I've come to give you life more abundantly. That's what he did at the cross for you and me. But, and I'm finished now, I'm so glad that he rose on the third day for me, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Christ's death on our behalf paid the price to redeem us. On that basis, God forgave our sins. He granted us an inheritance. He delivered us from the power of darkness and made us subjects of Christ's kingdom. Those wonderful truths should cause us to give thanks to God continually, as Paul's prayer did. And when we contemplate all he has done for us, how, how can we not live the power and victory in Jesus Christ? The door of the church is open. If you don't know Jesus as the propitiation of your sins, and if you have not received salvation, now is the time and today can be your day. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Today can be your day. If you're looking for a church home, look no further. Our lovely pastor, Dr. Grace C. Washington, and our distinguished first man, Deacon Robert Washington, along with the entirety of the Love Life Christian Fellowship Church family would love to have you to join our family where we will do nothing but love you and love on you. 
should you decide to join with us, go to the lovelifecfc.org website and select the orange connect with us button. Fill in your information and press the orange send button and one of our deacons and or elders will follow up with you. Thank you again for worshiping with us today. God bless you. Go in peace. Amen. Wow, what an amazing service. We hope today that everything that has gone forth has pricked your heart, that it has changed your life, that it has made the difference. We want you to come back and see us. Join us for any of our services. We want you to be a part of Love Life. Won't you join us? I want you to have a wonderful and blessed Sunday and a prosperous and blessed week. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining today's service. Remember, the online giving at Love Life Go to pushpay.com or text Love Life to 833-623-6191. You can also go to the church website or mail your tithes and offerings to the address below. We invite you to join us for any of our online services, which include Zoom Bible study each Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m., Zoom Sunday school at 9 o'clock a.m., Sunday morning worship at 10 o'clock a.m. via Facebook and YouTube. Meeting IDs and passcodes for all Zoom services can be found on the church website or the Love Life app. Join us at 7.14 a.m. each Wednesday for corporate prayer by calling 712-832-8305. The access code is 481 Three one zero zero. For weekly announcements and more information, please visit our website at www.lovelifecfc.org or the Love Life app. Love Life Christian Fellowship Church, where we make people our priority.